you. Praise the Lord. Let me hear the voice of an eagle. You are victorious already. You are a conqueror already. And I pray the conquering power of Christ will work in your life, in your career, in your profession, in your family, in your future, without any hindrance, in Jesus' name. We have received the I, the M, the P, the A, the C. Hmm. Now, the T, you will triumph. The T, you will transcend. The chi, you'll be transported. The chi, you'll be translated. Transferred. Transferred. I'm seeing you as the Lord is transferring you. Transporting you. Translating you. And somebody on the ground said, wait, wait, wait for me. I see you not waiting, you are going up. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. every man, every woman, every boy, every girl who has partaken in this impact convocation, Lord, I pray all the power they need, all the resources they need, all the support they need to get to the place you have destined each one for grant to everyone yeah. i pray they will become unconquerable yeah. unstoppable yeah. unbeatable yeah. until they reach that top in jesus name yeah. confirm it lord in every life Amen. every life Amen. without exception Amen. in jesus name i pray Amen. god bless you sit down in the blessing of god tonight i just want to package everything so that the whole pack will be in your possession and nothing will drop while you are going back home. So that from now on, that place the Lord has ordained you will be, you will be there. The tea we're talking about tonight is transformed and traveling together for a life of impact. Impact is not a static thing. Impact is not a stationary thing. It's moving. It's traveling. It's going on in a trajectory. And then we get to the very top. Transformed and traveling together for a life of impact. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. You have to present yourself. The Lord recreates you. He remodels you. He refashions you. And all the deficiencies all the things that will hold you back, the Lord has removed. And now, your whole self that will travel to that high level, you present your body now. Some people don't understand that the body is very important. 
to be a doctor, an engineer, a professional, somebody who makes it in life, your body, your brain must remain intact. Your eyesight must remain intact. Your voice, vocal cords, must remain intact. How about your joints? How about your flesh? How about your bones? If you're fragile, if you're brittle, if it's like any little thing can affect you and bring you down, how will you make it? You need to have that body in God's possession and offer that body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable service. You are cut out and made for service. And it is what you do in the service of humanity that translates to what you have in the service of God. And then in verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. Why? The world has not got it right. Almost in every profession, as we're going up in technology, we're going back in progress. Crime is there. A difficult, dangerous things are there. The world has not got it right. And if you join the world, also you will not get it right. That's why it says you are aiming for the top. You are aiming for the best. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. The will of God has been declared by God himself. When he created the world, there's a picture he had in mind. And that picture is still there, that there will be progress, almost that the world will be perfect. And yet, the world has not got that. It's the people that are now ready with impact that will take the will of God into the world. And everywhere you go, there will be improvement in every area in Jesus' name. And then that means you will not join them, you will not copy them, you will not be swallowed up by the system. You will sit up, you will stand out, and then you forge. And by the grace of God, God's desire for our world, God's will for our world, through you, through me, through us together, will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Second Peter, Second Corinthians rather, Second Corinthians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 18. But we all, you are included, except you exclude yourself. The Lord br brings you in, except you exclude yourself. The Lord has brought you here. That you will be part of an unconquerable team. It takes a team. That's what you have. That's what together, together, in this final message, transform and traveling together, together for a life of impact. And we all, with open face, beholding us in a glass, by the glory of the Lord, are changed, are changed, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. That's the transformation part of that. Anything that needs a change, a transformation in your life, in my life, in our lives together, the Lord will do it. And then we'll travel together for the life and for a life of impact. Three things we're looking at tonight. Number one, toiling, not toying, with transforming truth. Toiling, not toying, with transforming truth. Number two, towering, not tottering, with triumphant truth. We're not shaking, we're not 
wobbling, tottering, as if we're going to fall. We're towering, going up with the triumphant truth. And then, uh, number three, transmitting, not transgressing, the transferable truth. Well, God's truth that we need to, ch that we need to share. And then we become a network. I tell the next person. I tell another person. Everything I've got here, I will share with other people. If you share with 10 people, she shares with 10 people, another person there shares with 10 people, 1 to 10, 10, 10. And then each of those people that you shared with, they internalize, they personalize, and it becomes part of their life. And they share with 10 people, 10 people receive. You can share that on phone. You can share that by word of mouth. You can share that by your experience. You, are, or you can share that by encouraging them. And then each of those people, they share with 10, 10, 10. If we carry on that exponential multiplication, you will find we, by the grace of God, as the root, as the foundation, will change the rest of the world. Tell me, amen. amen. Number one, toiling, not toying, with transforming truth. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding by it, get it, possess it, make it personal, embrace it, believe it, work on it, by the truth. Let the truth become part of you. You bought it because you are going to make use of it. By the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding and then with the truth comes your heart in verse 26 it says my son give me thine heart that's the very center of your life a weak heart a weak life a troubled heart a troubled life a downgraded heart a downgraded life a heart that is not able to take the weight of all the things that come in life, it's a defeated life, a defeated heart. Now, give me thine heart, and then it will recondition your heart to the way the heart ought to be. And let thine eyes observe my ways. Now, when we've done that, buy the truth and sell it not. There are things we need to beware of buying. Beware of buying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number one. Beware of buying uh, temporary toys with timeless treasure. You have timeless treasure. And then there are temporary toys. They're just for the moment. Beware of buying temporary toys will soon throw away with timeless treasures. Number two, beware of buying trivial tradition for transforming truth. On the one hand, there is truth, transforming truth, that transforms in never do well to somebody who is hardworking, progressive, enviable and yet there are people that hold on to tradition trivial traditions instead of transforming truth beware of that number three beware of buying trampled tomorrow with today's thoughtlessness there are people they live for today they live for the time they are thoughtless they're not even thinking about tomorrow. 
They are not thinking about the future. And then tomorrow is trampled down because of today's thoughtlessness. Beware of buying trampled tomorrow with today's thoughtlessness. Number four, beware of buying traumatizing troubles with tempestuous temper. You see, many things in life that come to us, we buy ourselves, not with money. People think about, I buy this with money, I buy that with money, not money now, your temper, tempestuous temper. Some people, they buy trouble for themselves by their tempestuous temper. And that's not the thing we're to buy. You know, you go through life, you get to that place of work, and the tumultuous temper will just make everybody to say, we don't want him here. Who wants him here? Beware of buying traumatizing troubles with tempestuous temper. Number five, beware of buying thorny trials. Thorny trials with the timeless tongue. The people that bring trials upon themselves and they're not able to concentrate on building a life, building a family, building a home, building a profession, building you know, a Christian mission because their tongues are not tamed and they buy thorny trials for themselves by their timeless tongue. Beware, number six, of buying non-essentials with the most essential. Non-essentials, they buy with the most essential. Think about your life. What would you think are the most essential? Your brain, good. Your heart, good your salvation great and all the good things the lord has imputed imparted unto you most essential some people they use that most essential to buy non-essentials evaluate in your life what i'm buying now is this good is it a non-essential? Is it something you know, I can do without? Beware of buying non-essentials or the most essential. Beware, number seven, of buying empty substance with your eternal soul. Empty substance. There are some substances that are empty. You drink them, you smoke them, you take them, you ingest them, you inject yourself with them. They empty your brain. That substance will empty your heart. That substance will empty your power. That substance will empty your energy. And you have bought empty substance with your eternal never dying soul beware of that what are you to buy buy the truth and sell it not also wisdom and understanding and instruction when you buy the truth and you walk with the truth what that, does that lead to we're coming to john chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 13 as he spake these words, many believed on him. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Then verse 32 says, And ye shall know the truth. You know the truth, you buy the truth, is the pearl of great price, and the truth shall make you free. Everywhere you go, error will try to bind you. 
Deception will try to bind you. Lying will try to bind you. Hypocrisy will try to bind you. And all the people of the world, the rundown system of the world that is not based on the truth, will try to wrap itself around you like a poisonous snake. But the truth you hold, the truth you have, the truth you possess will set you free make you free and keep you free every time in Jesus' name. Nothing will bind you. Nothing will hold you down. The truth you have learned from I-M-P-A-C-T will keep you free to the end of your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 36 there. It says, If the Son... That the way, the truth, and the life. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Free, that's one level. Free indeed, that's a higher level. You'll be free. You'll be free indeed. And everything you ought to be, everything you ought to do in life, as God has placed you, where he has placed you, you will accomplish and it will be so in Jesus' name. Point number two now. Point number two is towering. You know a tower. And you see that tower up there. And what you have learned, this impact convocation is to make you tower, is to make you go up, towering, not tottering. Totally is when, you know, you totter, you wobble, you stagger, and it's as if you are going to fall, you will not fall. You will not stagger. And you will not fail in Jesus' name. How about that? It is by this truth, triumphing truth, that makes you to tower. Towering, not tottering, with Triumphant truth. Let's look at Psalm 51, verse 6. Psalm 51, verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. The desire of God is that you are totally truthful in your heart, in your veins, in your mind. In your thoughts, in your thinking, in your planning, in your envisioning, and in your moving out through life, never thinking, I'm going to deceive the boss to get what I want to get. That thing will not last. I'm going to deceive my neighbor to get what I want to get. That thing will not work. You see, there are people that behave and they act like dramatists. They wear a mask all the time. All through life, they wear a mask. You don't know their real self. Those people, they don't get far. But the people that know the truth must be in my heart, must be the foundation of everything I do, must be the propelling force in everything I do. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Look at verse 7. Then with that he now said, Purge me, was this so? And I shall be clean, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. That's you. I said that's you. No spot. No stain. Nothing. No wrinkle. Whiter than snow. I rejoice with you. Your life is going to be whiter than snow. And then in verse 8 it says, Make me to hear joy and gladness. Joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Verse 9, it says, Hide thy face from my sins. Blot out, 
How many of my iniquities? Blot out how many of my iniquities? All my iniquities. When he blots them out, he himself will not see it again. Angels will not see it again. Christ will not see that again. The Holy Spirit will not see that again. Even from your conscience, from your mind, he blots out everything. And then in verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I pray the Lord confirm it in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 119, verse 30. Psalm 119, verse 30. I have chosen the way of truth. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Now, seven things about this. Number one, take it to heart. The truth Take it to heart. The truth, let it be in your inward parts. The truth about God, the truth about Christ, the truth about the Holy Ghost, the truth about the Scriptures, the truth about your own salvation, the truth about the promises of God that cannot fail. Take it to heart. Number two. Turn each to habit. Turn each to habit. That the truth will not just be one day event, one week event, a short period event. You turn each to habit. Number three, tell it with honesty. Tell it with honesty. Anywhere you go, everywhere you go, tell the truth with honesty. Honesty. Number four, teach it with humility. The Lord has saved you. Teach other people who will be humble. The Lord has sanctified you. Tell other people, teach other people with humility. The Lord has promoted you. Tell other people how they can be promoted to you with humility. The Lord has given you great grace and you are able to do today what you were not able to do yesterday, teach other people with humility. Five, tend it for happiness. You want to remain happy? You want to remain joyous and glad? Then you tend, you nurture, and you nourish that truth in your heart, in your life, with, because you want happiness. Number six, Trust it for healing. It's the truth. Christ, the truth. It's the truth. The word of truth that comes to our lives and then heals us. Heals us spiritually. Heals us emotionally. Heals us physically. Heals us in our mind, in our memory. Heals us in every way. Trust the truth for your healing. Number seven, treasure it for holiness and heaven. Error will not take anyone to heaven. Lies will not take anyone to heaven. Deception will not take anyone to heaven. And hypocrisy will not take anyone to heaven. Treasure the truth for holiness and for heaven. And I pray that God of truth will always be with you. Amen. The power of the truth will always work in your life. Amen. Look at that Psalm 119, verse 142. 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Thy law, thy word, is the truth. Whatever is different with, from uh, the truth of the law of God, of the word of God, is not truth. It's not ultimate truth. It's not transporting truth. 
It is not a heavenly truth. And so you want to take the word as the final authoritative truth in your life. Verse 151 tells us, Thou art near, O Lord, and all the commandments are truth. Any other commandment coming from the world, coming from our neighbors, coming from so-called teachers, coming from anyone, only thy commandments are truth. Anything different from the commandments of the Lord will lead us into error. And you want to tower, not total, with triumphing truth. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24, it says, And that she put on the new man. The new man. Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Then he tells us in verse 28, in verse 25, wherefore putting away lying, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Verse 28, it says, let him that stole, past tense, steal no more, but rather let him labor. Walking with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. And then in verse 29, he said, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the Hear us. Number three now. Number three is transmitting, not transgressing. Transmitting, not transgressing the transferable truth. The truth the Lord has given us is transferable from Christ to the apostles, transferable. From the apostles to the church, transferable. From the minister to the members, transferable. From you to everybody you will meet, that truth is transferable. So, transmit the transferable truth, but don't transgress the transferable truth. Once you transgress it, people can tell. Now, you are not able to live by it, and you are recommending it to me. If it has not done you any good, how can it do me any good? Transmit it without transgressing it, so you can transfer it successfully. We're looking at Second Timothy chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. This know also that in the last days, Perilous times shall come. What brings perilous times in our days, in our land, in our country, in every country, in our continent, in every continent? Look at verse 7. In verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of of the truth. You know, uh, when we passed out of uh, school, I heard of one of our people, uh, schoolmates, that did very well in physics. And he had all those, uh, he had a distinction in uh, physics. And then uh, I heard the uh, ion. Uh, that he used to, that we used to straighten our clothes, broke down, and the young man, even though he had distinction, he had lunch, but was not able to repair 
that uh, small thing and put all the fires together, the positive, negative, and make everything to work, he couldn't do that. There are people like that that do it. They do it with a scriptural knowledge. They are ever learning. They know it in the book. They know it on paper. They know it in the head. They are not able to translate to their lives. Don't be like that. Let's be people who know the truth. And we transfer that truth from where it is, 18 inches down below to the heart, from the head to the heart, the truth has come. So you'll not be ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Look at verse 14 now. In verse 14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Everything you have learned. And it is what you do in practical ways with what you have learned, that is what will pull you over. And you always go over. I said always go over with the application of the truth that you have learned. You will not say, well, I'm outside that class now. It's, uh, you know, when I was in the lower classes, I learned the multiplication table. I learned 7 times 7, 49, 7 times 8, 56, and 7 times 9, and then uh, 7 times 7, uh, 7 times 10. I learned all that. When I went to a higher class, I didn't say, forget about that. 4 times 2, who cares? 3 times 4, who cares? Forget only about that. I'm not a higher level. You know what? All those multiplication uh, table things that you learned, you still have to continue with them even as you are going higher because you use them. All those basics that you add, you still need them uh, even at a higher level. Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom uh, thou hast learned them. And this truth we have learned will give us us, all the resources of heaven in our lives in Jesus name look at James chapter 1 reading from verse 18 James chapter 1 verse 18 of his own will begat he us with the word of truth with the word of truth God never does anything in our lives except was the word of truth. The word of truth, through that we are born again. He begat us. Through the word of truth, he purged us. Through the word of truth, he perfected us. Through the word of truth, he sanctified us. Through the word of truth, he healed us. Through the word of truth, he delivered us of his own will. Begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature. And I pray that from now on, you step on the platform of truth, and then you walk in the path of truth, higher and higher and higher, you will go in Jesus' name. How does that happen? How does that continue to happen? What do I do that I'm transmitting the truth, the transferable truth in my life to other people and I benefit and impact my community and my country and my world. Number one, decide for the truth every day. Decide. Bullies will come, you take your decision. The people that will want error and lies to cover whatever they're doing, they will come decide for the truth every day today might be your beginning that christ is the way the truth and the life and i decide for him and then after that i decide with him today and every day number one decide for the truth every day number two declare the truth Everywhere. Anywhere you cannot de uh, defend or you cannot declare the truth, check up. Should I be there? Anywhere 
that lie is reigning, deception is reigning, and corruption is reigning, and they have decided that is a society where corruption must remain at the bite. Should I go there? If I go anywhere at all, it must be a place I can declare the truth. Number two, declare the truth everywhere. Number three, deal in truth. Market the truth. Transact the truth. If you're going to have any transaction at all with anyone, commercial, anyone in society, anyone near, anywhere abroad, directly, one-on-one, -on -one, or you are going to go through the social media, internet, anywhere, anytime, you are going to deal with, in, with anyone, deal in truth with everyone. Deal in truth with everyone. And so you are conscious of the life you live. You are conscious of the commodity you have to get what you don't have, the truth. You deal in truth with everyone. Number four, discern the truth in everything. Discern the truth in everything. Somebody is introducing something to you. What do you do before you buy? There are good, good salesmen, understand? Salesmen are trained to sell even what you don't need. They'll wrap it up. They'll qualify it. They'll promote it. They will advertise it in a way that the ordinary fellow not discerning what they are buying will buy. I pray you will not buy error. Yeah. You will not buy deception. Yeah. You will not buy a gadget that will send you back rather than moving you forward. Therefore, number four, discern the truth in everything. The faces of people may deceive you. Go behind that face. The sun, the truth. The language sugar-coated uh, speakers may speak. The sun, the truth, in uh, everything. And some people be calling you outside. How many stories have we read? They told us to come. And then they worked out everything. And when we got over there, they turned us to slaves, slaves of the flesh, to be making money for them at the expense of our body. Discern the truth in everything. Number five, defend the truth every time. Defend the truth every time. That's why we're here. We're representatives of Christ. He is the truth personified. And he is the truth eternal. And we're here to represent him. And if we do anything we cannot represent him, it's not worth the effort. Number five, defend the truth every time. Number six, dedicate for truth in every way. Every way. You say that that is the truth. Nobody is devoted to that. Nobody is dedicated to that. As the impact has come upon your life, you dedicate your life for the truth in every way. And sometimes you understand, that's why we do research. Sometimes there's been a theory that in science, people have been working with. And then somebody comes on stage and he proves the other thing or that theory wrong. And this now comes forth and it's because the scientists are dedicated to the truth. Can I tell you, 100 years ago, if somebody had high blood pressure, 
Do you know they treated high blood pressure a hundred years ago? They will suck blood out of the body of the person. Their reasoning was the fellow is having high blood pressure because there's too much blood. And to reduce that pressure, they will reduce the volume of blood in his body. That's what they thought was the truth. Until other people came and they made research that all the blood they were taking away from the body of the people having high blood pressure a century ago, hundreds of years ago, that it was not working. And now they devised another thing that really will now drop the blood pressure to normal. Dedicate yourself to the truth. If people have been walking with error and they're destroying people's lives, then you come on stage and you're saying, that's not right. It's not working. And then you give us the truth that will work. Dedicate for truth in every way. And now, number seven, dwell in the truth evermore. Dwell in the truth evermore. Amen. From today, you say, I come into the truth. I abide in the truth. I dwell in the truth. I walk in the atmosphere of the truth. And the truth envelopes me. And the truth is within me. I decide for it today. I declare it everywhere. I deal in truth with everyone. I discern the truth in everything. I defend the truth every time. I dedicate myself to the truth in every way. And I will dwell, I will dwell, I will dwell in the truth. So that I will dwell with the truth with Christ forever and ever in Jesus' name. The Lord has brought us to this point of impact at the convocation. And the Lord, number one, interrupted our journey of insignificance to make us an influential, significant individual. And the Lord has confronted us and taken us where we were in the valley of mediocrity. And he moved us up out of mediocrity and to mastery. And then the Lord came and said, I want to give you something good to live for. A purpose-driven life. That now, from that time, that we dedicate ourselves to the Lord, we're pursuing the purpose-driven life to the peak, to the very peak. And the Lord said, do you understand? What will take you to the top and take you to the peak is the action, is the act, is the attitude. And then he grants us the understanding of having advancing truth, advancing acts and attitude so that we can have that ascending achievement. And the Lord has also reminded us will be at crossroads in life, will be at uh, difficulties, difficulty stations at life, and many people will cop out and drop out, and they will not continue, but you will have the courage to go. Yeah. I will have the courage to go. There are some people, they are driving, and then they meet a road block. They forget what's after that roadblock, where they are going, uh, they concentrate on the roadblock. And the roadblock is there. And there are people watching that roadblock that nobody will pass that place. They go back home. Uh, they don't get to the place where they ought to get to. They cop out. They drop out. I will not cop out. I said I will not cop out. You have that courage, that fortitude, that inner strength to say whatever lies in the way I am going through. 
you will cope with courage and then you will contribute something magnificent to this community, this country, and every country in Jesus' name. Yeah. I've been passed through and I and M, a P and A, a C, and now the T. Together today, we're traveling together. Jesus is the conqueror. You're traveling together with him. Jesus is the one, the divine transformation power in your life. We're traveling together with him, with the transforming, transforming transferable truth in our heart. You'll get where he has ordained. You'll get to in Jesus' name. I said you'll get there. I want to get there. Some few years ago, when I say few years, it's now more than 50 years, the 5th of April, 1964, I heard the gospel in a nutshell, in a very simple way, that if I will give myself to the Lord on that day, that the past will be forgiven. The past will be forgotten. And a new life will bloom before me. I didn't understand it all. I didn't understand where that conversion will take me. But I said yes to the Lord. And I knelt down. You can stand up when I give the call. I knelt down. I said, Lord, yes, I accept. Yes, I believe. Yes, I consecrate my life unto you. I became converted. From that year, things turned around in my life. And then, I didn't stop there. I continued, I continued, I continued. One day at a time, one step at a time, solving one problem at a time, climbing the ladder one step at a time, going up one level at a time. And here I am, and I'm not even through yet. Greater things are still coming. I bring it to you today. I bring it to you. This may be the greatest moment in your life that you turn the such light inward. And you say, Lord, the moment has come. I put my hand in your hand. My heart with your heart. And I put my powerlessness into your power. And I believe that today will be a turning point in my life. I have the truth now. I will continue in the truth until the final day. When God will then lift you up and make you to enter into a place where there is no problem. The Lord will do it. I said the Lord the Lord will do it. It's bowed and eyes closed. You might think are we still going to have chance to give our lives to Christ? Yes, for you. This is your chance that the truth has come to you. Transforming truth transferable truth, triumphing truth. And the Lord wants you to have this companionship of Christ in your life. And so wherever you are now, and you want this truth, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You want him to do that work of grace in your life right now, Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. Your time has come. My time has come. I said, my time has come. Raise up your hand wherever you are. You're raising up your hand. You can stand up there. Stand up right there. And give yourself fully to this truth from heaven, Christ. And then by his truth 
and sell it not. Rise up, the Lord is waiting for you. This time is for him. This is the moment for him, for you, to be connected together. Confess to him all the lies of the past, all the fraud of the past, all the deception of the past, all the self-deception of the past. And say, Lord, here am I. I come. Receive me. Forgive me. Purge me. And implant your truth in my heart, in my life. Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name. Thank you for the people who have realized and they have come. And I pray, forgive their past in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, every lie, every deception, every wrong action, every transgression of the past, forgive in Jesus' name. Turn their lives around. Let a new life begin at this time in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. They'll give you that slip to feel. Feel it correctly. No more lying. No more deception. Online, brethren, welcome. Welcome to the kingdom. Welcome to the Lord. He makes everything new. And you'll see all the information there online. Feel everything in and we'll be able to help you more. Connect with the Lord right now. Give your life, give your name, give your details. Counsel us. Do that quickly. Effectively. If you are getting phone numbers, count the digits. Write legibly, readably, something we can read. Counselors, when you're through, let me know. Are we through? Give me information when you're through. Praise the Lord. Everybody I said, Praise the Lord. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Every chain that binds you, now you are free. Every cord holding you down, now you are free. Any power opposing your life, now you are free. 
any bondage that is following after you i've been following after you now you're free any sickness disturbing your life now you are free Amen. any disease now you're free Amen. are you ready yes. freedom yes. somebody shout freedom, freedom. my freedom Somebody shout deliverance. deliverance. Somebody shout healing. healing. It is yours. Amen. It is yours. Amen. Today, every bondage you carried here, every bondage that followed you here, the Lord has come to set you free. Amen. And as you believe, it will be unto you as you believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Freedom today. Amen. Freedom every day. Amen. Freedom in this place. Amen. Freedom everywhere. Amen. Freedom in time. Amen. Freedom until the end of time. Amen. And freedom in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. The son that sets us free is here. And he wants to set you free from everything. And nothing will tie you down to mediocrity anymore. In Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. And lay the other hand on your chest, on your heart. He wants to make everything new in your life. Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we know when we mention the name of Jesus, our request will always be granted. Amen. And we come in that name. We come because of the efficacy of that name, the power in that name, the breakthrough in that name, the atonement in that name, and the victory in that name. And we pray every chain, every shackle be broken in Jesus' name. Amen. Every power that wants to push us, push us back, hold us down, Hinder us from climbing the steps you have given us to climb. I pray you break and destroy and shatter all those powers in Jesus' name. Amen. Set everyone free. Amen. Free from sickness. Amen. Free from disease. Amen. Free from imp impossibility. Amen. And free from every yoke, from every life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our dreams that have been shattered, Father, get them back together. Amen. Put them back together. Amen. And let that whole dream, wholesome dream, come to every life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Miracle of deliverance. Amen. Miracle of triumph. Amen. Miracle of victory. Amen. Miracle of power. Amen. Miracle of achievement. Amen. A miracle of continual progress that will never stop in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Joy. Gladness. Amen. Happiness. Without sorrow, Amen. without sadness, Amen. without regret, Amen. without pain, Amen. grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray, Lord, progress every day. Amen. Progress everywhere. Amen. Progress for everyone. Amen. Until we reach the point that you have ordained for every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. You have been with us all through the days of learning about impact. Now, you will be with us all through our years making impact in our communities, in our countries, in, the, in Jesus' name. Lord, 
We thank you because we know you have answered. You've answered the aid for every individual. For me. For me. For me. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name we pray.